I'm talking about the how the CA started, and it all started back in August 1908 when Hounham Meek wrote to Yachting Weekly, as it was then, and just selecting a bit of his letter, because there's a lot of hyperbole there, I allude to the ridiculous overcharging among the longshoremen of the land shark variety. What Corinthian yachtsman has not experienced the keenness of the teeth of these vultures? They didn't mince their words then, but he obviously hit the mark because by December they had an AGM, this is before the internet and social media, and membership was now up to 125. Remember, there weren't that many cruising yachtsmen then, and, and they had committee meetings four or five nights a week next year, which must have been really quite a hardship because they were meeting at the First Avenue pub. I can imagine it thick with pipe smoke and sinking pints, but it was productive because that year they produced the Cruising Association yearbook, which we have got in the library, and in it were the aims or aspirations, or we would now call them goals, and uh, I've been through it and wondered if we were living up to them. The first was to encourage cruising in yachts and boats. Well, I think we do that in a rather sort of nebulous way. The next, much more tangible, have a central office in London with an information bureau, otherwise it's a library, where members can obtain full particulars of cruising grounds and adjacent waters. Well, they did that. They started in one small place and moved to Bayswater, this magnificent library there. There's, these were the offices and library next to, I think, the Metropolitan Railway Line. So many of those books were actually there to produce sound deadening. They were bought by the yard, I'm told but many of them were also valuable. However, eventually they moved up to our current premises at Limehouse, where we do have a magnificent library. I don't think they could have imagined, beyond comprehension, a Ray Marine chart plotter. But I draw members' attention to our wonderful selection of charts. I love to see people in there poring over them. They still do. And there's nothing really to beat a paper chart and looking at it. I don't think anyway. The next thing was to arrange the appointment of HLRs. And well, we've certainly done that. We're still doing it 110 years later. There they are. They're all the way from Denmark down to the Falklands and across to New Zealand, all over the world. The majority, of course, are round and about Europe. Here's an example of how useful HLRs are. This is Fermen in Germany. I've been advised by email that a battery on my yacht in violence has blown up. Would any member be in the area that could check my yacht? I mean, that's a disaster, isn't it? You're here, and there was a boat in Germany, and the battery's blown up. Two days later, there it is. Thanks for the offer of help. Brilliant assistance of Janet, the HLR, and husband went beyond the call of duty, much appreciated. I don't know how much your subscription is to the AA or RAC, but it'll cost you, I think, a lot more than your CA subscription for that sort of service. Quite incredible. We don't keep a register of boatmen who take charge of members' yachts. Mm -hmm. uh, not required. We have rapacious marina owners. And to keep a register of owners who are prepared to take amateur crews, that does suggest it was more usual to take professional ones, the crewing service uh, run by Carolyn Milmo, that's a huge success whereby skippers can find crews to go anywhere and vice versa. And here's an example. This is on the forum. Crew wanted Cuba to Maine from Havana to Camden in Maine on an aero-rigged schooner. Now that's a dream trip, isn't it? If you're free, able to go, uh, unbelievable, really. And uh, there's a the reply, hello, read your post, may well be interested in your trip. And I gave this talk recently somewhere and the young chap came up to me and said, yeah, I joined that one, thanks. So a wonderful example of that. 
again, I think we're living up to this one, the handbook containing tide tables and other information, where we certainly issue the tide tables and other information. The cruising almanac sells across the, all the chandleries in Britain, a wonderful bit of advertising. And I have to pay great tribute to the people who are prepared to enter all the data laboriously into it. It's a great selling point for the CA. Our forefathers did talk about guides to the inland waterways as well. And we produced the inland waterways of France and Belgium, edited by Gordon Knight. Andy Mulholland has produced two great books for the Netherlands. And Gordon has actually produced about nine little gems of separate in the motorway guys in France. So we're living up to that as well, I think. This one to encourage and popularize yachting in every way, give facilities to beginners and others desirous of taking up the pastime. Well, we don't really, we've rather abrogated responsibility to first class sailing. I know that this was a very contentious issue in the history of the CA not so long ago when we gave up training. But first class sailing offer special discounts to our members and those are the practical courses they do and a very thorough list of um, theoretical courses which are of course held up in Limehouse, again discounted. And lastly, Ocean Safety, a great organisation with whom we have a close association we do a great job on teaching safety. Now, well, membership, we've got 6,300 in 43 countries. We are a, a truly international organization and I see the future in, in expanding more and more, getting members from other countries. Membership's staying fairly static. We won't see the effect of COVID for a while till the annual membership uh, subscriptions come up for review. I don't know what's going to happen. Our finances, uh, thanks to Richard Sherwood, the treasurer, are good. We have a healthy reserve and people used to say, well, why do you have such a reserve? You might say, well, in case there's a uh, pandemic rubbish. Well, we have. We may lose all our income. Uh, we have to pay for staff and so on. So but at the moment, the finances look healthy and staff critical to the running of the CA. Nice, stable, I think a pretty happy relationship. There will be no changes in the last 18 months. I won't go through, we haven't time to go through them all, but obviously Lucy, our general manager, will be known to everybody. We'll meet her at the end. And uh, Jeremy Batch, you will have come across uh, because he is reception. And if you phone up, you'll probably get Jeremy. And if you're booking a cabin, you'll get Jeremy. But they're all terrific, and I think yeah, I get on very well. Shouldn't forget Anya, who has, I'll mention her later, would love to cook for the southeast of England. And now, well, that should have been great, shouldn't it? And then COVID-19 comes along and everything I'm saying now is uncertain, unfortunately. The certainties are that we've opened. It's meant a huge amount of work. Uh, meeting the government guidelines, one-way system spacing, but the bar is open and I'm told doing very, very well. And the food, slightly simplified menu, comes online on Saturday. So that's terrific. I can't wait to get back there. And uh, when we, we're dining, some people have to eat outside and some inside because of social distancing. And the cabins are bookable and open. It needs an awful lot of work cleaning and preparing them and so on. But thanks to the staff, it is great. Now, when I first gave this talk a year or so back, I was asked about my vision of the future. I didn't really have any visions, but to thought about things. And the vision really is that the CA should be the automatic go-to organisation for the cruising yachtsmen. That you shouldn't have to think about who you go to. And by yachtsmen, I mean anybody of either sex who sails or motors or anything, anybody who cruises in boats, who should be the automatic go to. But why? Well, in rather amateurish terms, I've set out what I think 
are the important things for cruising information, for help, assistance, advice, to campaign, who's going to campaign on cruising matters, and lastly, an important provider convivial and social environment. If we take the cruising information, we have the Cruising Information Development Group, or CG, chaired by Ian Wilson. They are dealing with a massive job. The website, for example, has over 30,000 pages of information. And Ivan Andrews is really our web master, if that's the right word. He's, he's actually pruning that at the current moment, I think. That's a huge amount of information. Captain's mate, the so-called jewel in the crown of the CA, certainly is very useful. 18,000 reports, 6,000 odd plus locations, and every one of them is attributable to a person. And so you can check on their validity, and I have a feeling that Dave Lovejoy has probably checked all 18,000 reports. This is unique, and we had an IT company looking at things recently, and he said they've never come across any organisation where trust featured so highly. You can trust those reports. There's the uh, screen on the Find My Friend on your phone. A few year, two and a half years ago, it went that far. Now it's full, really. I want to just go to Find My Friend, and it's nice to see that here's a a boat right down there in the Marquesas, that's uh, Kate Walker down there. And this one here in um, oh, the Azores is in fact Alterama, who he has, or she, both of them, have incorporated new app option of tap to email. So you just tap on it, and an email goes to them. And I did that and said, have you come across the Atlantic? And what was it like? And so on. And I got a reply straight back. It, it's a terrific facility to contact people. The other thing you can do, as you can see, is put who you are. You can put both on. Actually, mine doesn't have tap to email because I can't email myself. Ah. Captain's mate is getting tired. It's looking tired. It's probably getting as far as it can. So the next development goes under this odd name, CIDG Project One. And this is to produce a really new version of Captain's mate. It won't look like Captain's mate. Those of you who use things like Navali and Active Captain will have a better idea of what it's like, but it will be a lot better. And it has the advantage, of course, that every entry is um, attributable to person. It's going to take a little while to produce. Uh, the team doing it are uh, working flat out. One of the advantages of COVID is, of course, they're at home twiddling their thumbs with something to do. And particularly Sam Steele and Ivan have uh, worked really hard on getting this up and running. I can't wait to see it. The only trouble is it council will have to improve, uh, approve it and it could be quite expensive, but it'll put, make us world leaders. Why else would you join the CA? Well, for help, assistance, advice. Well, we have talked about HLRs. Forums are absolutely incredible. You get any advice you want on that. This, I took these at random. I know changing the coolant on your Airbus backer and perhaps the grill on the Plastimo could be got off YouTube, but you'll get an authoritative view sometimes within 10 minutes or so. But these ones a bit lower down, staying in the EU, uh, the Straits of Messina, the complex, uh, they've got a one-way system and you get heavily fined. It's a bit like the channel, Dover Straits, before arriving in the UK from Portugal on a US flag vessel. You'll get a good answer to any one of those queries. And of course, you've got fellow members. You, wherever you see them, you're in the marina or on a, a boatyard, if you see their bergy, you can go and ask them their questions. And rats, you go on, there's a big unassuming name, isn't it? Regulation and Technical Services, a group of people who really beaver away at small details, rules, regulations, and so on. They 
are very authoritative. And Peter Stuart Hunt, our publicity manager, uses them a lot when uh, magazines say, what is the CA opinion on? And it'll come from rats. The best thing, I think, at the moment, you'll find this on the opening screen of our website, is this map of countries of showing whether they're open or closed. Red means closed. Unfortunately, Holland is closed, where my boat is. And at the bottom of the page, there's this interactive list of venues. I've clicked on Spain, and as you can see, it says virtually unrestricted. There are a few details there, and it says more. And if you were to click on that, it would take you into several Spanish websites. And this is being updated by rats all the time. Absolutely invaluable. And who's going to campaign on cruising matters, real cruising matters, not local UK matters? It's us. Rats have been very successful. The, the lobster pot campaign, uh, it's a word really to cover unmarked fishing gear. It's been taken up seriously by the Scots, who actually legislated, I think, now to in, that creoles have to be marked properly. Rats scored a great success in stopping the Belgians fining uh, British sail, UK sailors for using the red diesel. They do a lot. And then the individuals, as Chris Robb, who has taken on the Greeks completely and has managed to get the Greek tax sorted out. He's now attacking them on one or two other issues. And council, you may not think of council as being a campaigning organization. They tend to rather perhaps delegate to other people, possibly. But uh, this thing, I, you probably all know about it, but if you don't, forgive me for repeating the information. This is the 1980 day in the EU campaign. The problem is the UK, we, it's not a problem, we allow EU citizens, Americans, Japanese, anybody to come in visa-free for six months. After the 31st of December, the EU will only allow UK citizens to visit them for 90 in any 180 days. And many people don't understand this, any in 180 days. You have to imagine yourself in a bubble, a very fashionable term now, and your bubble is 180 days. And as you move around, it, you must not be in it for more than 90 of the 180 in your bubble. Uh, exceeding that uh, suffers severe penalties. So we've been campaigning on that. Uh, we've been asking members to write to their MPs. We've been campaigning in Europe as well. In fact, uh, I just had a thing from our Baltic HLRs who have asked for some bullet points because they are meeting their MP to try and get the EU to change it from their end. But we're making progress. This came off a Facebook site, which actually is valid. But the last meeting of FRIU, which is the future relationship of the, with the European Union, chaired by Hilary Benn, they spent three hours, the link to it all is on our own forum, and they've written to Michael Gove. So I think we've got about as high up as we can get. And as long as the MPs are bombarding him, uh, we might get somewhere. There's an organization you'll see at the bottom of the screen, 180 Days Visa Free Organization, who are really doing the, the bulk of this work, and I'm in very close contact with them. Do look at their websites. We're making progress. Now, coming towards the end, provide a convivial and social environment. I couldn't think of a better way of describing it, really. Uh, not exclusive to London. I, I, perhaps I'm sensitive that many people think that everything is in London. I know a lot of members live near London, but it's not. We've got our sections, the eight cruising ones and our 11 local ones. And we do get out, for example, in 18, we were at the Southampton Boat Show, met a lot of members, the Scotland's Boat Show, the Northwest Road Show. 2019, Southampton Boat Show was a huge success. Now I fell flat on my face with the North 
Western Midlands Roadshow, nobody wanted to come. So we, uh, they were cancelled. So we had to rethink that. Scotland Boat Show, we had a very good time there. People came in appalling weather and uh, we supplied food and drink for our members because they don't get the chance to meet uh, people from London and or in office. That was good. And of course, there was Robin's, uh, Robin's great Golden Globe anniversary down in Falmouth. So that's looking fairly good. And of course, we meet people on the water. And if you fly a burgee, there's a good chance somebody will drop in for another drink. So that's OK. And the requests that we should have videos, we've got a few videos up. They haven't been looked at very much. A couple of high quality podcasts. And now we come to the real big issue, live screening, which is really what we're doing now. And uh, two things have happened, I think. COVID, which uh, meant we had to do something. And Zoom, which enables you to do things very easily, indeed, just as we are at this current moment. So if I had to sum up the president's vision of the future, I, I lie, lie there in bed having visions, this universal awareness of the CA, and that is happening. You know, our people on the stands, Lucy and so on, will say that people don't come up and say, what is the CA? They say, how do I join or tell me more about it? Peter Stuart Hunt puts a lot of effort into that, as, men, as do our own members. I'd like to see a steady growth of membership. I think particularly we get people from overseas, improved communication, well, we're working hard on that. More outreach activities I've mentioned and resituating the CA in the digital age. I think this is Ivan Andrews suggested, pointing out that many modern boats can virtually, I think is what he was trying to say, can be controlled by your mobile phone. I've certainly seen super yachts being parked with somebody just holding a mobile phone equivalent with twin engines and joysticks, and all done on the phone. You can check your boat's water level and everything on the phone. And there may be a new generation of members coming forward who don't know the difference between a bowling and a sheep shank, and they're running everything electronically. So you've got to be thinking about that group. So that was the, the vision, but along came COVID. And that has really thrown so much uncertainty into things. People don't really know with, um, what the future holds. Even the government doesn't really know what it holds. So I've made a few notes. At the moment, there's no chance of any real boat shows. And that's where we recruit a huge number of, of our members. But there is a possibility. Hi, Alison. Thanks for joining. Hello. Um, the, there is a possibility of virtual boat shows, which may sound daft, but actually we're looking into the, there are options where we can have a stand. People can talk to members on the stand. They can have a virtual tour of the cruising association. They can buy produce, and if Every single exhibitor is there. We'd be able to get people, say, who would normally go to a Dusseldorf boat show, looking at our virtual boat show. So that's possible. I think there's a great change in attitude, likely, in the future. We inevitably, Alison and I were discussing, is going to have a reduced attendance at Limehouse for a while because of social distancing. And many of our members, me included, are in the high risk old age group who may not want to go up to London. So we've got to bear that in mind, but we're going to be increasing live streaming probably with hybrid meetings with a smaller attendance in London and a bigger uh, broadcast. Because we've been, as I say, getting up to 400 people looking at some of our things. We stand to lose an awful lot of money because people who come, they pay to come to London, and they pay to attend, and they buy food, and they pay drink, and they stay in the cabins. So it's perhaps a nominal charge, I don't know. Um, and possibly a wider use of the bar, restaurant, we're getting a full license very soon, and uh, we may have to be a bit more commercial. If we've got fewer members there, we may have to look outside. So, at this point, it's normal to ask for questions, but I'm not going to. I'm going to ask you a question, 
and say, what do you want of the CA in the future? You've got the unique opportunity of having Alison here, chair of council, and the CA is slightly unusual, and the president doesn't chair the council. The chair is Alison. And oh, my fault. Very your fault. She gets all the credit, gets all the blame for anything that goes wrong, and I hope all the credit. It's a very important position. But you won't often get the pair of us sitting next to each other, wanting to hear what you want. So if any questions come up on the screen, Alison is, I think, oh, yes, there are questions, answers. Okay, for one thing, I'm looking at. Uh, greater ease of hearing talks might help. Um, a couple of things, Julian. Derek's reminded us, you talked about improving communications. I think that we should put in a word for cruising magazine. Mm -hmm. as, as the yachting press gets thinner and thinner and more and more pressed for money, cruising magazine shines out as a really quality publication. Camilla's done such a fabulous job on it and indeed on the monthly newsletter. So I do think that we are improving communications massively. Right, yes, so thank you very much. I knew I'd missed something out that was important. Well, you've yes. got to give me something to say, haven't you? Well, um, I, I, you're quite right. The cruising magazines are getting thinner and thinner, and ours is a great read, and the newsletter is, is absolutely packed. Yes, and Camilla Herman is the person to thank for that. Absolutely. Um, you haven't got a lot of questions, but I'm sure that they will be coming in, but you've got a lot of thanks. Well, I've got Q&A down there, yeah. Yeah, and uh, a number of people who perhaps missed the beginning have said uh, access to the talks is good. Will it happen again? And yes, it will happen again. Um, I did, in fact, hear from Mike Golding today that he is content ah. to broadcast the Hanson Lecture on the 7th of October, so we will be doing uh, some more broadcasting during the autumn. And I think there are possibly plans for some more before that. But um, we're going to have a week off at least, aren't we, Julie? Yeah, well, I'll say I mean, it's a lot of work goes in, into this. I, uh, looking at one or two of the questions, uh, uh, one was interesting, they anchored in Studland Bay. Mm -hmm. see, oh, yeah. And uh, we had the, I can't remember which section it was I was involved in, the person was sailing his boat in while attending the, the, the webinar. Oh, you could hear navigation comments called out by his wife, for port hand boy, watch the port hand boy. And so on. <laughs> Distraction. So that's one thing. But I do see rather a good question down there at the bottom by Arvid Wilson. Will the new app be multilingual? multilingual. Yeah. Ah. Um, <laughs> I would hmm, think probably... Not. You may have to use Google Translate, but I'm not actually entirely responsible for that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I keep checking. That's why I keep peering through the bottom of my multi um, lenses to see. Oh, this is very nice from Kevin Hughes. I've recently joined and just wish to say how impressed I've been with the organisation range of online events during lockdown. Thank you, Kevin. We're delighted. Um, Paul Dolce says, we trail sail and love the information available through the CA. Last year we were in northwest Scotland, Essex and Suffolk and the Morby Home. Why would you do get around, Paul? Small boats like ours don't feature much. Are there many members who also trail sail? Could this be a possible new section? We have thought about that, actually. We have thought about that. If you'd like to start it, Paul, get in touch. Section Secretary, be very happy. Right, I, I see that Andrew Geddes says that a useful tool on Captain's Mate would be a pop-up list of suitable anchorages within a chosen distance and to be star rated. I think the new app may well answer that sort of question. I don't um, see the current Captain's Mate undergoing radical change for the moment, but the, we'll bear that in mind. So we have thought about that. Uh, ladies complaining questions. about sorry, Julian. Ladies <laughs> complaining about the quality of the CA Burgie. This comes up oh. time and time uh, again. And poor Lucy um, keeps going to different suppliers, keeps trying to find something better. Um, I think one suggestion was that you dip the fraying end in epoxy resin. That stops it unraveling a bit. But uh, she's on the case. Uh, and what can we say? You know, flags disintegrate in in, in hot sunshine. Uh, we, we will uh, continue to try and balance quality and price and distribution as best we can. Yes, so I see there's another question. 
question on captains mate it keeps coming up about chronological order whether it's the oldest first or first last and so on i think that needs addressing to uh, dave lovejoy drop him an email uh, on that it's a uh, old chestnut that one and i see dave long from kent asked yes. what the future holds for section meetings when i go to the kent section meeting and uh, sardines would be quite happy in that room it's it is packed solid so it may have to be a hybrid meeting david uh, with the people watching from home and uh, a smaller number actually in in the pub i think that all of the section secretaries are looking to do something of that degree and in sear house although we have reopened we are observing social distancing and that means 20 people in the building at the moment i am dearly hoping that we'll be allowed more than that come october but clearly um all of the sections are in a similar situation whether it's our own building or whether it's the pub or club that they normally associate with and i think We've got an extra license, and if we work it out between ourselves, I think that we don't mm. have to coincide with um, more than two on a night. And yes, hybrid meetings are, are definitely the way forward this this autumn. So, David, I'll be popping something on the forum about what I'm doing in London. Um, thank you very much for working so hard in Kent. And you know, if you need any help, let us know. And gentleman who was thinking about Paul, you were thinking about the trailer sailor. Uh, yeah, there are trained sailors, and if we if we made an effort, I'm sure we could recruit them. Yes, I think we should. I was a trailer sailor for uh, we were, weren't we? Yeah, yeah but, we, um, we saw you. We saw you in your cartoon on your trailer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, and in fact, the, the trailer sailor asked me if they should join, and I said very definitely because they cruise everywhere more widely, in fact, than the regular cruiser. Um, Mr. Geddes has helped us out again. Um, dipping the fraying end of your burgee in varnish oh. also helps, he says. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, people don't seem to want to revolutionise the CA. Well, it's <laughs> often nice to know we're doing some things right, isn't it? Yes, I think so. Anyway, I think place, <laughs> but I don't think we would be where we are if we were getting everything wrong. Um, so, as we are going to be able to gather all of the comments and questions together so if if we've missed you out we will catch you yeah. on the rebound and no doubt uh, something will appear in julian's next president's letter yeah there's a question at the bottom uh, do we know if the yeah. age profile of the membership static are new cruisers joining are we catching the younger cruisers and fund their and um, that fund their cruising with youtube and uh, Patreon. Patreon. I, I think we are getting younger members because uh, you know we have a new members uh, seminar twice a year mm. and I've been impressed by how young the new members are but that could just be me getting older. <laughs> no, no, it's that it's that 70 is the new 50 okay yeah that's well, right. That's true. We, are, we are all carrying on longer than we would have expected to do 20, 30 years ago. But yes, um, we were looking at the membership figures in, in finance on Friday. And, you know, we expect to lose a certain number of people retiring, giving up, selling their boat, not wishing to continue. Um, the, the letters file is full of things saying that we are terribly sad we've had to, to abandon our wonderful boat, but the time has come, no longer can pull. Um, but we are always getting numbers in at the other end mm. of the scale. So, um, are we are we attracting twenty year olds who are, uh, are dinghy racers? No, um, no we're, we're attracting people who are able to afford a cruising boat or to aspire to affording a cruising boat in the next five years. I would say, is that fair? Yeah, I think so. How? Oh, here's one. Out of the history. How did the move to Limehouse come about? Shall I attempt to answer that one? Um, I think we had to get out of Ivory House, didn't we? Well, yes, Ivory, the CA started off, um, as I showed Ireland. you before, on um, Baker Street, then they went to Baker Street, and then Ivory House, not an Ivory Tower, but an Ivory House in uh, Lime House, which became too expensive in the lease, I think, yeah. became very difficult. But uh, there was a suggestion we should move to Lime House. Was it British Waterways had a plot that they wanted? 
And it was in the, 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 the time when documents was being developed. Right? Yeah, that's right. And you would believe that the handsome collection of books uh, bought by mainly Hansen, who is one of the founding members of the CA, was nearly worth nearly a million pounds. But that was a big responsibility to be looking after, and we couldn't. And they were sold, I think, to English Heritage, who is now in Cambridge. But that it enabled us, really, to buy Limehouse. Yeah. So that's how it came about. Mm -hmm. And it is fortuitous that we're there. And we're on a peppercorn rent, I think, aren't we? And uh, as I say, it pays for itself. So that, that was a stroke of luck. Absolutely. A couple more comments. Um, somebody's asking, uh, have we thought of achieving charitable status? Uh, that has been investigated yes, very thoroughly. At length, and it was of no benefit yeah. to us. Mm. The disadvantages were greater than the advantages. Yeah, we have. Yes. Actually, we, we, we just don't have any basis on which to claim that we're a charity, frankly. Um, we, we did our best, but... Oh, right. Well, Peter's chimed in, a uh, publicity officer, saying that they are uh, trying to attract a younger demographic yes gaining good traction with CA News in the Sailing Mags. And actually, I think it was Peter who's just sent me uh, a picture from Sailing Today, because they've got an article in there about our campaign on the Schengen problem. Yes, we're very grateful to Peter for uh, establishing uh, a more solid social media presence than we've yeah, yeah. beforehand. It builds it's, slowly, and you, you never know uh, how much of it is um, working and how much of it isn't, but the numbers go up every month, and we hope that we are we are getting to a younger audience right. in that way. Right. I, do you think that we've? I think it's time that we invited Lucy to join us. Yes. Lucy, would you turn your video on, please? Hello. Wonderful. Now there's somebody who's been to the hairdresser today. On purpose. <laughs> it was this just timed well. <laughs> This is a point where I and, and Alison would like to wind up. I must mention the fact that Jeremy Batch must give a very, very good lecture, uh, now a long one, on the real history of the Cruising Association. I also want to thank Anne Rowe and Ivan for turning around these lectures and getting them out as a recording within oh, 24 hours almost. It's, very, it's terrific. But it does end up it's like the end of a theatre performance or a concert when I would ask Lucy and Alison to come up on the stage. I would present them with a bunch of flowers. And I happen to know that somebody has arrived at both houses with a bunch of flowers. So I can't give them to you. I can't kiss you on both cheeks, but I can raise a glass to you and say thank, thank you. you. Um, John, John has just arrived with my flowers. Oh, good, 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 good. Lovely. Lovely. And we, we, we just definitely wanted Lucy to come and show her face because uh, Lucy has been the eminent screws behind the scene. She has given yeah. up for an hour and a half of her Tuesday nights every week yeah. while this has been on to do the really clever stuff with the technology so that we can just talk and not worry about it. So, Lucy, like, yeah, like all studio on. managers, you don't see the studio manager, you only see what goes wrong if it goes uh, wrong. Hide away in the background. It's been my pleasure, though, but thank you. We've we, we had you. some interesting incidents to, to deal with. <laughs> so Initially, <laughs> it's got better. Okay, well, Alison, thank oh, you. Well, thank you, Julian. And um, yes, to everybody who didn't notice, we, we are going to be doing more of these, but we're going to have a couple of weeks off. Um, <laughs> I hope that you're all able to get to your boats at some point this summer. Yeah. Um, good night, and thank you for joining us. Good night, Lucy. Bye. Bye. Bye.